is that it was going straight into 4 o'clock, and the thing that happens at 4 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays is Joystick Streams happens. Woo! Right now is Joystick Streams. My name is Anthony John Agnello. I am Joystick Community Manager. And with me today is Mr. Zav D'Amatos, uh, Feature Content Director of Joystick.com. Of all your Diablo needs. Of all the Diablo yeah, we're starting. We're starting a, v- a new vertical. It's going to be Diablo.Joystick.com. And we're, <laughs> we're just going to do speed runs of Diablo. Uh, Zav, the very disappointing thing about it being 4 o'clock, though, is the fact that we can't cover all of the Diablo needs that the public has. Because while you've been enjoying the Di- Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls beta... You can't do it right now. Yeah, so we were testing this about an hour ago just to make sure everything was working all right because I just moved and my setup has been sort of all over the place. So we got everything tweaked and ready to go. I turned on Diablo Reaper Souls and it was working fine. Ran around a little bit, working fine. And then I told Anthony, hey, I'm just going to go get a cup of coffee. Worst mistake of my life. Because now we can't log into Reaper Souls. It says that the server's offline for maintenance, which is weird because it says on the server page that everything is hunky dory. Bald faced lies. Bald faced lies. lies from Blizzard and Battle.net. So we are going to play that new hotness, the OG Diablo 3. Um, and we're going to try to jump I'm going to I'm going to jump back and forth and see if we can maybe log in and see a little bit of Reaper of Souls. I haven't actually played any Reaper of Souls. I've just logged in, I've made a character, did the import and haven't I was like gonna start fresh. We were gonna go bright eyed, bushy tailed into the new adventure, the new act. But, Zev, yeah. our uh, one of our regular viewers, Faux Ben, has just pointed out as you and I were discussing that we're ha- since we're having server difficulties, this is the authentic Diablo three experience. And that's what we strive for, a joystick. We strive to give you give you like the legit news. We want to be real. We, we you want need the this realness. Stuff. Yeah, the realness at you know, all times. Shots fired, all that stuff. We're doing everything. <laughs> Speaking of shots fired, let's look at my demon hunter, who is uh, is pretty awesome. So I played this game quite a bit. Um, I I stopped after Act One Inferno difficulty, which is the highest difficulty. Um, and I've put in on my Demon Hunter 100 hours and 50 minutes, which makes me real sad to have to say that out loud. I have a couple of other characters that I've messed around with, but I really like the Demon Hunter. In um, the new expansion coming out, there's a new character class called the Crusader who mixes um, melee combat, which the Barbarian had, with some magical stuff that I guess the Witch Doctor or the Monk uses. Hmm. So... um, it's a, it's a shame we couldn't see that. Maybe we'll get lucky later and we'll we'll jump in. Um, so I was thinking we can watch me die, or if people, I mean, this is like not even a thing anymore, but we could probably look at the crazy uh, special level. I wonder if I have that on this. Have you heard about this secret level, the rainbow level? See, this is this is entirely new to me. Almost everything. The only time I have really seen or played Diablo three was at E3 last year, I got to sit in on a a demo of the Xbox 360 version about, I guess that was four months before that came out, and that was it. That was the first, like, that's the first touching or seeing of Diablo 3 that I've ever done. I know that there are often ridiculous levels in Diablo games, that there's levels filled with cows and all kinds of nutsiness. Yeah. So I don't know. I know that you have to unlock these items per difficulty level. I don't remember if I have all of the items in Nightmare or only in Normal. Um, let's check Nightmare, and we'll see if we can get in there. So I stopped playing this game uh, just before they in- included the Paragon levels. So originally, when Diablo came out, it was just level sixty. And people ran level 60s and, and made a bunch of different characters. But then mm. eventually, in order to add more of an end game um, tilt to it, so you weren't just running the same thing over and over again, they added these Paragon levels, which were levels beyond level 60. Mm. And I think that in the Reaper Souls beta, they increased the level cap to 70. Because I think if I go to my character sheet, of course, I'm not going to remember how to do any of this stuff anymore. Um, 
Yeah, so there, because in the Reaper of Souls beta, if you look at the passive skills, there is a there is a fourth passive skill box that says level seventy on it that I noticed. So it looks like they're they're jacking that up. But no new no new abilities, unfortunately. Hmm, for that's the people. So let me see if I have this crazy item that we're gonna need to get to this really silly place. Oh gosh, staff of hurting. Is this the? I don't remember exact. It might be the staff of hurting that I need. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The I, staff. You of know hurting. that just that does not seem like an expertly named. Uh, ex that does not seem like an expertly named item. The staff of hurting seems like somebody was running out of names. <laughs> uh, like, also, oh, it's the this... staff of ultimate destruction and lightning bolts. Also, All right, what maybe after that? maybe it's because maybe it's because I haven't played this in a long time, but I honestly don't remember this Book of Cain altar here, which is where you go to identify items. Um, I guess this is they've changed this, but I don't remember this at all. Maybe someone in the chat knows. Maybe I'm crazy and I just forgot. But I feel like this has been added in the last. Um, like post-release, because I played this game for 100 hours before they did any of the Paragon stuff. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to kind of go back and forth and see if we can get to the Reaper of Souls beta here, but while I'm, I'm rolling this, we'll see if we can get to the Fantasy Land. I don't even remember what it's called. I haven't played this game in a long time. This is the perfect is way to do this, I think. Um, so yeah, why don't you tell people how you're a terrible person and you've never played Diablo ever? That's true! Everybody in the chat, I am a terrible person who has never, ever played a Diablo game. Uh, and I, it's not even like I was born in 2005 and I have some kind of excuse. Uh, I, my entire experience with the Diablo series is back uh, in the early aughts, back at the beginning of the century. Uh, <laughs> When I was in college, I lived with a, a guy named Neil, who was an avid PC gamer. And all of my experience of turn-of-the-century PC greats were, you know, I played these games vicariously, just watching him play through them. So, you know, one month it would be Deus Ex, and then it would be Half-Life, and then Diablo 2 would be the game that he constantly went back to and played obsessively. Mm -hmm. So I I got to see Diablo 2 played on all the different difficulty settings and start to finish pretty much for two semesters straight of <laughs> college. Now I do uh, I do want to say that I'm joking when I call you a terrible person because there are people in the chat who are like, well, I guess I'm I'm an awful person. Uh, no, you're you're totally cool. It's I work with Anthony and I know him, so I already know he's a terrible person. So it works. It works. That's out. true. Zav has Zav has the insider knowledge on it's true. why I'm a terrible person. No, it, it doesn't have to do with my lack of Diablo. So I just talked to this ghost cow, uh, which I have summoned. Uh, because I have the ghost of her, the uh, the staff of hurting, and I'm going to go to Whimsy Shire, which is the secret level in Diablo, <laughs> which is the dumbest thing. So this is sort of a commentary on um, there was when they first showed off some screenshots. I'm like giving you all the information from 2012 here, but. When they first showed off screenshots of Diablo 3, people thought it looked too colorful, and there were some jokes that it was going to be like Diablo, but with unicorns and rainbows and stuff. So the secret level is um, Diablo with unicorns and rainbows. And I'm killing <laughs> I'm killing unicorns and teddy bears and uh, a bunch of other stuff here. This looks like if Zynga made Diablo. Oh, don't give them any ideas. <laughs> Not enough discipline. Hoover fan in the chat uh, said that our problem accessing the beta has to do with the fact that a patch is being rolled out right now. Oh no! I went, hopefully that'll come back online before we're we're done this. I would hate yeah. to to not be able to play that. The the confusing the confusing thing is the fact that there's no word on Battle.net about the servers being down because of patches being rolled Maybe it's, it's, it might be buried in like a forum post or something, but when we went to Battle.net and even like the website, it says, here's the information you need. It's, there's nothing there. 
<laughs> Zab, what is happening when you're picking up these delightful cupcakes? Um, that is my health. Cupcakes are health. Cupcakes Clearly. are health. Clearly. I do like when you open the chests, which are these happy clouds, my character um, sort of cheers. So if you if I go and click one of these happy clouds, look at them, they're so happy. She's sort of like, wait, yay. She like lifts her arms in, in, in triumph. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Um, so uh, this is Whimsy Shire. What we can try to do too is, uh, we can try to run Inferno difficulty, which is going to be hilarious to watch me die constantly, I'm sure. Do it, man. Or if anyone has Diablo and they're at home and they want to play, we could just, like, co-op something. I yeah, uh, I, please, let's let's let everyone in the chat know where, uh, yeah. what the server is and what that action is. Um, so, we, maybe we should just keep repeating it so people know when, uh... So they know that what happened, uh, we were supposed to be streaming the Reaper of Souls beta, but unfortunately it's offline for maintenance, and even though we were, we did ask if we could stream this, <laughs> and they're like, sure, yeah. and we did not, <laughs> and then they neglected to tell us, oh, but the time that you do that is not going to work, so... <laughs> Yeah. For some reason, the representative of Blizzard then cackled like Muttley from <laughs> Bat Erasers. Yeah, he was exactly. like, sure, you can stream it. Why are you doing that? Do you have a cold? <laughs> uh, all right, so what, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to switch out and we're going to go to Inferno Difficulty, which is brutal. So I played this game co-op with a lot of... Um, I remember when it came out, I played with um, some friends from, uh, like, Weekend Confirmed and, and TRS, those guys. We played throughout the entire thing, pretty much. And uh, it was super fun. Like, I, even when people, when the game first came out, people were sort of not... Like, there were some really hardcore people that did not like the game. I still had a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, but after it got to a certain point where... I'd run to, I got to Inferno and a couple of other friends got to Inferno and we were sort of waiting for people they were lagging behind. And then they kind of lost interest and because they lost interest, we kind of lost interest because this it wasn't, it doesn't scale very well or it didn't at the time. Mm. Uh, so it was pretty brutal to try to play Inferno difficulty by yourself as we are about to find out. Uh, Zev, <laughs> lemur fart from the chat. Oh, is that his Christian name? Okay, cool. That Lemurfar, Lemurfar, I think, is a, a traditional name. It's Norwegian. Oh, okay. Uh, Lemurfar would like to know if how much better the game is without the auction house. Uh, and I was saying that the auction houses haven't totally been removed yet. No, but so the auction you house have is already still... seen some changes, right? Yeah, so the auction house in the proper game is still available. Like, there's still the button here. I can click the auction house and we can go look at stuff. People are being crazy and they're selling stuff for $200 million. Um, actually, my weapon I got for dirt cheap because as soon as the auction house was announced that they were closing it, people just started selling stuff to get rid of it. So I got mine for, for pretty cheap here. Um, a legendary bow. So um, that stuff and the drops, uh, the drops have gotten a little bit better in the uh, OG Diablo on PC. Uh, they are going to get much better, according to Blizzard, with a new loot system that they're including in the game to give people better drops to compensate for the fact that you can't go out and buy gear from the auction house. Uh, so that system is already in the beta. And I've heard people talking about, like, they were rolling through the beta with their level 60 character and got a drop um, that was better than the gear that they had bought on the auction house that was, like, really mm -hmm. high level. So the drops have been really, really um, generous Actually, I actually wrote the Deja review for Diablo on PS3 and Xbox 360, and that doesn't have the auction house in it. And that stream or that um, that uh, loot system, sort of comparable to what you're going to see in Reaper of Souls, because um, they did have to make adjustments because there is no auction house, and the drops were, were fantastic. I thought um, because that was sort of like the it sort of you lost the fun uh because a lot of the fun is like rolling the same level over and over and over again trying to get better drops mm -hmm. but the original system in the game just didn't have very good uh loot system uh, like a loot drop system because it's sort of they they were 
on the heels of this auction house that they really wanted people to check out, which, uh, you know, you know, I dabbled with it, but I never really got too deep into it. I know people who like who made like 200 bucks the first couple weeks wow. selling nonsense. Yeah, it was, it's pretty it got pretty hectic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's let's see what this inferno difficulty is all about. Sure, I want to um, see I want to see some people getting torn limb from limb here. Yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, let's just yeah, let's just run. This here, Zav, we're getting a lot of uh, we're we're getting a lot of agreement in the chat that the sort of the balancing of the loot drops. Uh, is definitely improved, but it's not perfect quite yet. No, and um, I mean, if you're specifically talking to the, about the beta, I mean, a lot of that stuff in the beta is still being deployed. Uh, the game doesn't come out until March 25th for the new loot system. Uh, you know, I th I'm hoping that it... There, so there's two things that could happen. They could end up being too generous and people lose interest because they're just getting amazing drops all the time. Uh, or... It could still not be quite there, and then people are just going to be frustrated because they're still waiting for the game to be what they remembered. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, because you know, when you, when it comes to franchises like Diablo, there's people you're sort of fighting nostalgia, and you're really trying to be innovative as well. Um, you know, part of me wonders if Blizzard could have appeased people with. You know, just saying, you know what, here, 12 months after the release of Diablo 3, here is Diablo 2 remade in the engine of Diablo 3. So it's nice and pretty and modern. Uh -huh. And here, you, if you want that game, here is a version of that that is perfectly playable and updated and all that. And I know that Blizzard has continued to support Diablo 2 down the years, but... Oh. You know, if people just wanted that, why not just give them that? Why not just say, here, here is here is that again, and we also have this new thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird because you've heard a lot of people talk about this, especially when it comes to um, franchises, even, even really young franchises like Gears of War. I remember interviewing Cliffy B talking about you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If you want to try new things, people really get upset because they really enjoyed a specific system and how things worked exactly. And you don't want to be accused of doing, you know, the annualized Madden thing where it's, right. you know, it's just new rosters. Why do you have to sell us a brand new game every single time? So, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. People want new things, but then at the same time, they also, they want to be surprised and they want a reason to play the new thing and not just the same old, same old. So I'm trying my darndest to not die. Um, I already died once, but I'm trying my darndest to, to survive here. Zav, who is this dude following you around everywhere? So this is the Templar, uh, who... There are a bunch of NPCs, like followers, that you can use, and you also can upgrade them. Uh, you can set give them weapons and items, and also set their uh, skills. Hmm. So, for example, for this guy, you can make him focus on healing you, or you can make him focus on aggroing the other guys, the, the the bad guys. So if you really, if, you know, you're in a clutch situation, he'll try to get people off your back. Hmm. When you play co-op, and you can play uh, four-player co-op, the, um, the follower immediately disappears, because it's not, it doesn't really scale to this follower. Mm. It scales mostly just to the one person. Um, so, actually, you know it'd be funny. I wonder if I have the staff of hurting for Inferno, because that would be <laughs> the worst thing that's ever happened in society. <laughs> so Nephilim Valor, they added this system pretty early on too, where if you uh, clear elite packs, and those are the bad guys that are like blue, have a blue uh, hue around them, or um, yeah, a gold hue around them. If you if you kill, I think it's like four. Every time you kill one of those packs, you get a, a magic find and gold find and bonus experience boost on your character for as long as this system is up and running. So this is 29 minutes. The more of these packs I kill, the more that stacks. So you get even more gold find. So there are some systems that were built into it before they decided to get rid of the auction house to. 
alleviate the issue of not having really solid drops. Now, maybe this is just because I am unfamiliar with what it is like to play Diablo. And I realize that, you know, whenever you're describing a game to somebody that hasn't played that game, it can mm -hmm. sound incredibly complex when it isn't. Sure. But Diablo in particular, even more so than StarCraft and Warcraft, in, in the pantheon of current Blizzard games, it seems like there is more to remember and more to understand and sort of memorize in Diablo 3 than those other games. Am I crazy in that regard? It I mean, seems a lot more intimidating. I mean, it's it's weird because this. I started playing this game in a, in a weird time in my life when I was sort of getting bored of the regular first person shooters and just regular <laughs> games. That I, I turned to things like um, Arma Three and Daisy. Diablo Three was your summer of forty two. Is that what you're <laughs> telling me? It's. I mean, so it. It seemed so basic to me. It didn't seem like they were doing anything complicated. The only thing that I kind of felt intimidated by was catching up with my friends. So mm. you had a bunch of people who were already on like Act 5 in Nightmare and you're still rocking normal level uh, difficulty and you can't join them and they're, they don't want to go back and help you because they've moved on. They're, they're beyond that. So... Um, yeah, it, was, it, it never really seemed too complicated. It, it's, it's, it's a simple system. And I think games like Borderlands 2 have sort of made it even more commonplace. Mm. Although in obviously different a different style of game. But it has similar loot-based mechanics behind it. The point is you want to keep killing stuff and keep running the same levels because you want better and b better gear. Mm. Like, where's the end game there? I have no idea. Because you're See, just doing the same thing over and over again, but... Borderlands 2 is an interesting example, too, because I found that the content that opens up at the higher difficulty levels of Borderlands 2, I found that really boring. Mm. I enjoyed running through uh, the, the campaign and doing as many side quests as I can, but I felt that at a certain point there, were, there was very much a feeling of diminishing returns. That fighting harder enemies and getting better loot didn't tangibly make the game feel any different. I felt like I was just sort of spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. But Diablo seems... It seems like it just really gets a brand new feeling every single time you up the difficulty level. Is that is that true? Well, things become way more punishing. And then the thing that is interesting about it is that it becomes uh, different even when you add more people to the mix. So it scales... Mm -hmm to the players that you have, which makes it more exciting and it makes it um, you know, way less accessible for people who are just wanna jump in and check it out for you know, randomly. Um, mm. That's why I think that you know, it was really important for them to add things like the Nephilim Valor um, and um, you know, like the stacking buffs and the, the Paragon levels, which are the levels that are, happen after level 60, because at a certain point, there was no reason, because the drops were so bad, for people to keep playing the game. Uh, it was stacked so much in favor of people going to the auction house or getting like super lucky by c continuously running and continuously like running um, stuff with like your items. Like if I go to my items, they, all of these have different skills attached to them. So some some items have like higher chance of magic find or gold find. So you'd have people just making gold and and magic runs just for the explicit purpose of wanting to sell those items. Mm -hmm. It really changed the way that Diablo was being played by its most popular fans. Um, now I know that there was. It got a little greedy for my for my tastes. I think. Part I. I and again, this is complete outsider perspective. But I know that part of the reason that greed seemed so apparent, you know, beyond a mechanical level, was that the end game content, when you when you beat the game, when you got to the end of the story, that stuff wasn't very good when the game first came out. Was that the case? Uh, well, I mean, the story itself is is not great to begin with uh people i don't think are playing this game for the narrative at least but... aren't there people who are like super into the diablo lore i thought I that was yes i mean i'm sure there are i mean you know you know there are you know there are people who like a lot of like the story of pokemon i couldn't tell you what that is but i'm sure there are people <laughs> who are really into it who would probably 
I've never, I've never read them. I know that there are like Diablo tie-in novels to Pokemon. Like, that's weird. No, it... <laughs> that's weird. And then I clicked on Pikachu <laughs> and collected all the sweet swords and armor that came out of his mouse guts. That's, <laughs> mouse guts. That's awful. I don't, I don't know who the person writing this Pokemon Diablo novel is, but he is disturbing. But bless them. Bless their soul. <laughs> Hey, I, I'm not. And listen, I'm not. I'm not knocking Pokemon. I just. I mean, like that's sort of the thing. It's like there's been so many games. I couldn't tell you if there is a coherent story behind it. Uh, but I'm sure there are people out there who are going to be like, absolutely. There is. There is a deep and rich narrative to the Pokemon universe. The Pokédex is just is just bursting. Bursting at the seams with yeah. hidden history. Uh, Sadie X in the chat is actually saying the story is deceptively complex. And that's, that's the, that is the impression that I have always gotten from it, is that there is this sort of long, convoluted tale that goes through all of them. I will tell you that if this game doesn't do a great, a, a, like, it tries its darndest to explain what's happened in the past, mm. but it doesn't do a very good job of it. And also, it does something that I was, so I, I streamed um, State of Decay recently, and I was, laughing about how everyone in any zombie story is always confused as to what's going on because they've <laughs> never heard of zombies before. Like, zombie culture doesn't exist in zombie stories because you need that element of what's happening. You need that element of suspense. And the viewer is like, it's zombies. Like, haven't you ever seen a George Romero movie? Like, what's wrong with you? So the thing that I think is, is kind of funny with um, something like Diablo is there are these monsters that are attacking the world and the thing that bothered me about the story is uh, Deckard's niece doesn't believe a word that he's saying thinks he's kind of crazy and she has like seen these monsters and has seen these th things attack her village and still thinks he's out of his mind like there is that element of like what's happening in the story it doesn't even trust its own narrative um, Deckard is the kooky old man who's in all these games right yeah all right. Yeah. Yeah. Flexing my Diablo knowledge. You do. You know a little bit. Actually, it's one of the names of the characters. I use a different spelling of it, but I, I, uh, one of the, my go-to names for games. Uh, if it's a woman, it's Ripley. If it's a man, it's Deckard. Oh, you're just rocking the like '80s action hero, the '80s sci-fi action hero thing. Mm -hmm. oh, I yeah. love it, man. I love yeah. that. That's why whenever I play a game, I will name my character Jack. But it will be after Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China. That seems like, but see, I, I okay, I respect that more. But it's it's <laughs> it's weird because it's such a common name. It's like I name my character Bob because I'm a big fan of De Niro. Like I don't well, understand. It, like if, <laughs> if there's space, if there's space for the name, I like to go with old apostrophe Jack Burton. Okay. And then if there's even more space, I'll type out an entire monologue that he speaks while trucking on the road oh, before man. stabbing Lopan in the face. You should you should play uh, DC Universe because there is a whole section for a biography and I feel like this is you have you have a rich lore and history for your own characters <laughs> that <right. laughs> that isn't even present in most video games. Uh, Zav, it is now 4:30. Do you want to give it a shot? Why don't we give it a shot? All why right. don't we just try uh, everyone in the chat who might just be joining us for the first time, you are not looking at Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. You are looking at plain old vanilla Diablo 3. And that's because while Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls beta was accessible minutes before we started streaming, <laughs> yep. it, is, it, is, it was literally playable seconds before we started streaming. The uh, servers are down at the moment, but we are going to try again. We're going to give it, uh, we're going to give it a whirl. Yeah, so, Or we're uh, just going to go to the bar and do Tristram. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm going to, I'm loading it up here. I have to throw up the splash screen so people don't try to steal my login deets. No, the server is not online. That's a shame. I, I feel I feel real bummed. I mean, we really wanted to stream Reaper of Souls. Here, I'll even show people the the screen here. <laughs> we were ready to go. Like, yeah. look. 
It was gonna happen. Yeah. It was gonna happen, and... Here, okay, hold on. I'm gonna try... I feel I feel good about this one. Anthony, this one, this one's the one, I this think. This is the one? This, this is, is the, the one. one. No, that was not the one. Oh, God, it's never the one. No. So, as you can see, the server is offline. That is unfortunate. Oh, man. Look at that title screen just mocking us. With, with Profusely. Uh, yeah, so... I guess huh. we can keep playing Diablo. D Zanato in the chat has uh, said, "I want my refund." <laughs> yes, uh, dude, we will we will cut you a cashier's check. Well, we can't send you a refund, but we can send you free hours of internet, courtesy of AOL. Do yeah. they, we still have any of those discs I, I'm pretty in sure the office. We have been. Do, <laughs> Look under your glass. Are we using them as coasters? <laughs> Joystick still has. Over 1 billion free hours of AOL. Uh, they are no longer attached to boxes of Chex Mix. Uh, <laughs> so we can't send you the Chex Mix with the AOL hours disk. But those hours do work. Mm -hmm. You just got to install the AOL client on your Windows 95 computer. Oh, man. All of those words that you said are amazing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I, I haven't really focused, I haven't played the game in, in quite some time since really before the Paragon level stuff, uh, I didn't even get into it after that because everyone that I knew was playing the game sort of stopped after a while. Um, but I've put in, I've put in my time. I, I put in a hundred hours into this bad boy, um, primarily rocking a, a demon hunter. I would love if people have the game to, to maybe jump in with us. I don't really remember how to start a public game. I wonder how we could do this. <laughs> uh, the user I smell like poo in the chat has recommended that we just start playing Angry Birds and tell people it's Reaper of Souls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, you know, I honestly, I wonder if we did do that, if somebody out there watching would be like, man, Blizzard's art style has gotten so lame <laughs> trying to appeal to the mass market <laughs> what are these green pigs even doing here i would love to drop loot i would love for people to um see us playing whimsy shire and think that that's what Re <laughs> reaper souls looks like it's just that <laughs> with wonder, happy little clouds um i wonder i can't even remember how to do this thing here how do i how do i even no see and like this is like there, uh, I, you know, we played quite a few hours, me and, and a couple of buddies here. I'm going to go into hell um, difficulty here. Or let's go to, hmm, let me see. Yeah, we're going to go to hell difficulty. Because there I do definitely have the correct staff. In order to go to Whimsyshire and hell, because it is brutal in that section. So this is basically what people would be doing constantly when they were playing Diablo 3 is they would keep running the same levels over and over again in higher difficulty with gear tiered towards what they were looking for. So you'd be wearing gear that probably wasn't the highest level stuff you had, but it had better magic find and gold find. Um, and that's how people sort of went after the items that they, uh, that they wanted versus having to use the auction house. So I'm like super pumped that the auction house is gone. Mm. I'm glad that they're doing it alongside. It's smart that they're doing it alongside an expansion because if they did it by themselves, like if, as an update, I don't know that that would bring me back to it. But the yeah, I think people, I think people would just sort of be like, okay, fine, you you did what you should have done all along, yeah. and that wouldn't get new players. Yeah, and that's definitely there's definitely a, um, people who will probably feel like you know too little, too late at that point. Uh, but now they have the option of like, well, not only did we fix that thing you really disliked, but you can also play new content. And I'm I'm pumped for it. I mean, I like I like Diablo. I'm gonna make you play Diablo. You know what? I I'm telling you, man. As that should have been one of your four in February, by the way. Well, I, I'm waiting for the PlayStation Four version. And it, it, since it's becoming sort of a theme with my streams. 
uh, of going into a game having never played it even one second uh, in my entire life. Mm -hmm. When the PlayStation 4 version of Diablo 3 comes out with Reaper of Souls, I will play it. I will stream it directly on... Is Inferno mode available from the start? No, so you have to... I don't know how if it's going to be the same way on the console version, but in order to unlock each difficulty setting, you have to beat the preceding difficulty. Oh, man. So, yeah, I played through this game f three times. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's how it went. Or I think when you hit level 60, that stuff unlocked. Man, I don't... It, Again, this was like three years ago this game came out. Or yeah. two years ago this game came out. Maybe someone in chat probably knows better. Uh, Sadie X is disappointed that I am going to wait for a console version. Oh, what, yeah. I, the, the I mean, if is, people didn't already dislike you enough because you haven't played this game. I, even if I was playing it on a PC, though, uh, even if I was playing it on a PC, I would be using a controller. I just... Oh, there's I, no controller support on this, then. I, I've never... I've never taken to mouse and keyboard controls in, in anything. I've, I've been playing video games for 30 years practically, and it's just not uh, its just not a control scheme that I enjoy. That's just the way it is. I, I, I recoiled in disgust <laughs> as you were speaking. That is an awful... Unless, unless I'm playing, like, King's Quest V. If I'm playing King's Quest V, give me a mouse and keyboard. Or Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> Oh god, that's, that's, that's worse it. than never playing Diablo, is playing Leisure Suit anything. <laughs> All right, Did you play that update, that Leisure Suit Larry update? I, I have not. Oh, it's bad. It's real bad. I've heard, I've heard that it is unplayable, and I don't want to sully my memories. This is, this is going to ind indict a family member here, but I am going to say that my first PC gaming experience in my entire life was at the ripe old age of six. Mm -hmm. My aunt taught me how to play adventure games by showing me Leisure Suit Larry. That is true. In 1988, my aunt was like, here, I'm going to teach you how to play games on PC and showed me Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> the thing that I, I enjoyed about Leisure Suit Larry that they also did bring back for the uh, Kickstarted uh, reboot was the questionnaire in the beginning to, to determine if you were of age. That's in there? Yeah, it's still in there, which is pretty oh, funny. It's funny. not the same questions. I mean, maybe some of the same questions are in there, but there are some more modern questions. Yeah, um, so and a lot of them are tilted towards American history, which as a oh. Canadian, I was like, no, I'm totally of age. Like, I'm holding my ID to my computer. Like, look at it. But, you know, I didn't know. I the don't. old questionnaire was skewed so much towards just, like, 1980s nerds. It was like Monty <laughs> Python questions. Yes, that's some of that stuff is still in there, yeah. That's great. Uh, so, oh, that's such a shame that that's not good. So I'm going to talk to this. Um, is the stream still... Oh, I'm, I'm just want to make sure that the okay, that was weird because I my I have it open on my phone, but my phone was not updating. So I'm gonna talk to this ghost of the cow king because it's Diablo. I'm talking to a ghost of a cow. Oh, uh, Z Pele. I'm not sure how to pronounce this this uh, user's name out loud. Z Pele is just joining us in the chat and. If anyone else is just joining us along with Z Pele, uh, yes, we are not playing Reaper of Souls because the servers are down for maintenance. Uh, apparently, there is a new patch being rolled out right now, or no, there's something. Uh, Blizzard is had, did not make it abundantly clear what is happening, so we are playing the original Diablo three. Yeah, we're 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 pretty bummed about it. We really wanted to show people Demon of Souls, so. I mean, maybe we could return to it when the game comes out um, yeah. in March. But, um, you know, you're getting to see Whimsy Shire on Hell Difficulty. Why are you complaining? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, I know exactly. We're bringing right. you cupcakes. We're bringing cupcakes you the hottest, the hottest info from 2010 or whenever this game came out. It feels like it came out so long ago, but it was 2012, I think. This is, uh, is really a creepy game. You know, it's weird, I... So, speaking of 4 in February, which is uh, Joystick's challenge to all of its uh, staff and readers who want to participate, where we play four games um, in the month of February, the shortest month of the year. 
I one of the games I'm playing is called Cryostasis: Reason of Sleep. I don't know if you've ever heard of this game. I have not. It's um, so it's a first-person horror game, not in the vein of an amnesia, but it's sort of the same idea where you are investigating one location, and I believe the intent is for you to escape at a certain point. It's by a develop the uh, Ukrainian company called One C, which I don't know if they are still around or if they merged with four, uh, with the guys who did uh, Metro Last Light. Anyway. My intent, because I have a new setup where I'm using my television as my computer monitor, I basically made a Steam box and, and I'm running everything next to my television. Uh, it doesn't have controller support. And I was really hoping that it did for the purposes of the stream, but now I'm, I'm sort of like forced to figure out exactly how I'm going to get this done because I have no idea. Because I really wanted to play that game with a controller. Uh, Zav, Zpele just uh, asked a very pertinent question, and this is actually something I'm curious about too. He said, can we talk about Torchlight? Sure. And Torchlight is another one that I've never, I did not play Torchlight 1, I did not play Torchlight 2. So are you just uh, not like into this kind of game? I have never really played a loot game, besides huh. Borderlands. It's just something I don't have a lot of experience with. How about like dungeon crawlers like Boulder's Gate? I don't He's, want to put them in the same vein, but I mean, they're, they're kind of similar. I, yeah, like, I... This might seem like an odd comparison, but a lot of, like, the early aughts gauntlets, you know, the, the newer gauntlet games that were made around 2000, that were sort of like that, were sort of like, here is a, a big dungeon and you can go through and you get gear and it's just about playing through that. I, I got into those a little. Mm. Uh, but I tend to, uh, I tend to stick to games that are finite. Mm. You know, I don't like a specific genre, but I like games that have a beginning, middle, and end. And loot games are very much about. It's almost like a sport, you know, where where you get into a thing and then you keep going back in there and keep going back in there, wanting right. the harder and harder thing. And eventually, I just like I. I want something that has an arc. Right. I want to feel that I've, 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 you know, I, not necessarily always a story. Although I do gravitate towards story-based games, mm -hmm. uh, I want to feel like it's, you know, I start at the bottom and I rise up and it peaks and there's a, a gratifying conclusion. You know, it's funny. It's one of the games that I've gotten into over the last couple of uh, months that I've written about a bunch is uh, Dark Souls. And that was a game that I just didn't... I played it once and I was like, I don't get the interest in this. I thought it was brutal and I didn't not have any fun with it. And eventually a friend of mine convinced me to give it a shot. And, and think of it from a perspective of instead of being upset when you fail, you just like use that as a, a part of the learning experience. Mm. And um, so I've gotten into it way more. And I'm about to die right here. So... Um, but I feel sort of the same way that you do of there are people out there who play that game where they're like, okay, I'm going to do this one particular build and right. then I'm going to not, I'm going to play it again as a different character class and I'm going to see how I can run it as different people. And that doesn't really appeal to me. I figure like if I play that game, I'll play it to its conclusion and not play it ever again. Mm. So I do get that. It's weird that a game like Diablo is sort of the opposite, where I will play this game multiple times. There are very yeah. few games that I will play multiple times. Is there any game that you'll play more than once? Or have See, played more than once? Like, that's the other thing. I love replaying games. In mm. fact, like, going back for a second go at something is, you know, one of my, like, greatest pleasures. I love, you know, doing complete runs of platformers, you know? And not, not just classic stuff. Like, you know, once a year I'll sit down and blaze through Super Mario World. But at the same time, uh, you know, I've, I've played through Rayman Origins like three or four times at this point. Hmm. Uh, and I, I love replaying games, but still, I, I don't know what it is about, you know, games that don't really have a, a clear ending that don't draw me in. Uh, well, I mean... Like, <clears throat> The, strategy games. Strategy games are another one. Sure. Right? I would say that there's like, there's definitely a story to be told in RTS games. That's one genre that I really have had difficulty getting into. I've mm. never really been an RTS person. Even when people talk about like, Advance Wars came up, 
in our yeah. Game of the Year stuff. And I think it was, like, Danny's Game of the Year. <clears throat> and I just, like... Oh, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Which is the same, Fire, it's the same yeah. guys. It's the same guys. It's same, the same team, I think. But um, even Advanced Wars, which I think came out a couple of years ago, the latest one. But it just, like, it never appeals to me because I feel like I'm not getting that story. Or I feel like even if there is a story there that it's, it's sort of hidden behind a lot of weird systems that I'm not entirely interested in playing with. Hmm. So I don't know. It's 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 interesting that we have sort of similar ideals about it, but not definitely not the same genres. I'll tell you, man. One of the things that has sort of kept me away from like hardcore strategy games is I I am afraid of getting addicted to them. Uh, and it's not it's not really an RTS, but I've only ever played a Civ game once. Oh, see, I and, do love Civ though. That's weird. Oh, see, well, I. This is years ago now, but a buddy of mine, uh, who was my roommate at the time, says, "Hey, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna teach you how to play Civ, and we're gonna play a Civ match. It's gonna be me against you, and we're just gonna do that." It's gonna take seven years. We sat down. We sat down at 1 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon. When we finally stopped, it was 1 a.m. on Monday morning. <laughs> what? And you're like. Not how many oh, poop awful. socks were involved in that situation? It, it, exactly. Well, it was just like played <laughs> on laptops, and I like when I realized that Sunday had ended, that day had turned into night yet again. Oh God! I was like, I'm never doing this again. I am never. I am uninstalling Civ. I am never turning Civ on again. I will never ever play Civ ever. It's again. funny because I recently talked to. Um, I went. I did the last episode of Week and confirmed. And I was talking to Brian Leahy, who I used to work with at Shaq, and he was trying to convince me to play Dota, because he's heavy mm. into Dota too. And I've never really played a MOBA. I think I played it I played Blizzard's Dota, which I think is called Heroes of the Swarm now or something. Was I can't that what it's called? I, Dota wasn't like a, a real full game release, right? No. It was like a fan mod, right? It was a, it was a, Defense of the Ancients was a mod for Warcraft 2. Um, which game became really popular, like Ice Frog and those guys. Like Ice Frog, I think, is one of the developers or one of the people. Uh, this is very highly political in terms of the structure of how that stuff started, but I know that that guy was involved and he is working with Valve on Dota 2. So I played Blizzard's Dota at BlizzCon a couple years ago when it was still just called, I think at that time it was called Blizzard Dota. I think they had just changed the name at that point. But he wants me to play Dota. He's like, you'd probably really like it. And he's to deep into it. And I know if I get into it, man, it's going to it's gonna get real bad. Because I, <laughs> I, I think I have an addictive personality when it comes to games like that. And I feel like I'm just going to get really deep into it. Like, uh, this is before, you, this is before uh, Diablo 3 came out. But Dave um, Hinkle wrote an editorial, a really great editorial, about why he was not going to play the game. Mm. And it was because he um, got really, really into Diablo 2, and it kind of ruined him. Like, he was missing work or school, or, like, he was just, like, it was messing him up because he was wow. forgetting about his personal life and just playing the game. Um, so I don't think he's ever actually played Diablo 3. But, you know, I, I feel like I can. it could get that way when, if I played Dota. Mm. Yeah, I... And, like, God, those MOBA games seem to inspire a, a level of obsession and devotion that I, I've never I've never really seen outside of, like, hardcore RTS players, like, hardcore StarCraft players. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, like, I, I can totally see how somebody would get totally addicted to a Dota 2, uh, but the bar of entry... It seems much more difficult to fall into it than something like even like Diablo. Yeah. Uh, you know, it seems like it seems like there's such a learning curve that it would be harder to become addicted to that than than something like this. It was like I didn't play Dark Souls for a real long time because the commentary behind it from people was you don't like this game, you don't know, you're like, you're playing it wrong, this game is amazing, if you don't like this game, you don't know what's going, like, you you just don't know, like, how awesome it is, and I felt like the commentary behind it was very, like, 
if you're not playing this game, you are dumb. Like, that was... I wrote an editorial about this a long time ago. And, um... You sort, I sort of had to ignore all of that noise when I wanted to get into it. Because, you know, you get sort of in your head about that. And the thing about Dota is... I feel like there is a lot of noise of... If you're not playing it right, not only are you... You know, wasting everyone's time, but you can actually ruin games for other people. Mm -hmm. So I've never really got into it because I feel like that would be... I don't want to get... Yeah, you don't want that... I don't want to ruin causing. someone's experience, yeah. right? And I feel like uh, League of Legends is a little bit more casual in that regard. Like, I, I think it's trying to get more people into it. But something like Dota is, like, really hardcore. I don't want to mess with people's... Zav, uh, Duke748S in the chat... Uh, just brought up something, and I know that this is also kind of a a, a topic that you're well versed in. He said Eve is so addictive. Yeah, and you know, I you're one of the few people that I know who is like a very active Eve player. Mm -hmm. But do you think that Eve sort of takes over your life, or can you just sort of play Eve casually? Um, there's definitely when I first started playing it, and I've only been playing it for like less than a year. Um, I, I was one of those games where, and I, I we have a, I have a, a big thing coming up about it um, shortly soon about that is one of the things that happens about Eve where you hear all these amazing stories about like wow the three hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff was just destroyed and it's a really fan like um, fascinating thing to read about and listen about and like how this world exists but it. None of those stories make you think, I really want to be a part of that. Like, mm -hmm. I know that their trials spike, but as soon as people get into the beginning of that game, they realize, well, I'm not in the middle of political battles. Like, it takes a long time to get to even a point where you would be involved in those battles. Right. Unless you stumble upon them by accident. So that can be a really daunting game, and I feel like when I first started playing it, I really wanted to be involved in that bigger stuff. So I was playing it nonstop, and I felt like it was taking over a, a, a small part of my my life because I was I really wanted to be a part of it. Um, that game though has a lot of really interesting systems in it where you can pl kind of play it passively. So you can learn skills, like you could set up a queue of skills, and it will tick off even while you're offline. So even mm. if you're not playing the game directly, you're indirectly playing it by leveling up your character. Mm. Um, so that's that's one of the things that I think makes the game really interesting too, is you can sort of be doing your everyday life stuff and then still being involved in the world mm -hmm. in some small way, at least for, on an individual level. But yeah, no, Eve is, um, I mean, I, I we've talked about maybe streaming Eve, uh, but that's a really difficult game to stream because a lot of the time what I'm doing is like, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna mine these asteroids. And that's not really enticing for anyone to watch. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a really fascinating game and it's a really huge and amazing world that, that you know, they have a pretty big vision for that stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm captivated by Eve from the outside. I love reading about Eve. And I love reading things that the people who play Eve say. Like I, I, you know, when there, when there's like the big convention in Reykjavik every year, I love reading summations of like the talks, just because I think it's fascinating the way that world persists and grows mm -hmm. with the active participation of so many people. Right. You know, it's like you have you have however many millions of people still playing World of Warcraft, or you know, there are 27 million people playing League of Legends every single day. But it's not like they're all part of growing a fictional economy, you know? And, yeah. and Eve is just so interesting in that regard. I mean, they but have... But at the same time, I would never... It never, like, wants me to play it. I mean, that's... And I have a bunch of interviews with uh, the CEO, Hilmar, who... Um, Hilmar Peterson, who just did a Dice talk about Eve. Um and one of the main focuses of it is, is like, do these stories about how all of these amazing economical disasters happening, do they help or hurt the longevity of it for new players? Like, he did show that there's this chart of when that happened and everyone was talking about EVE, their trial spiked. But how many of those people stick around? Yeah. And yeah. 
you know, from my experience, it was one of those crazy events that happened that made me want to check it out and sort of like put on my big boy pants and, and stop thinking that it was going to be too much for me the same way that I thought about Arma or D or um, Dark Souls and say, you know what, like this sounds interesting and I sort of want a challenge. These games pose very, very strict challenges upon you. And they're not just like regular shooters and they're not just regular adventure games. Like th these are very different kinds of experiences and I wanted to seek that out. But you don't, you don't get any of that when you first start EVE. And I think for those new players who really want to be a part of something huge like an event like, that just happened, that's going to be disappointing for them. Um, and I don't know how well, I don't know whether or not those stories help or hurt the game. Well, Zav, we have, a, we have just about five minutes left before Joyce Extremes uh, shuts down for this Thursday. Uh, Nevik James, who's been with us uh, in the chat since the beginning of the stream, says that uh, the new beta patch is now up. It's available for download. <laughs> Amazing. Of course uh, it is. It is there now. Uh, so whoever at Blizzard set out to to throw a wrench into our beautiful engine, uh, you've succeeded. You've succeeded this time. Nobody at Blizzard actually did that. This was just a, a ridiculous, ridiculous, uh, <laughs> ridiculous happenstance. And Nevik James is now saying that even though the patch is available, the servers are still down. <laughs> yeah, I just try to log in there to, to see what uh, we can get in there. So I do um, want to apologize for people who came in and wanted to watch Reaper of Souls. I think um, if if people want to see Reaper of Souls, uh, maybe I'll stream it on my personal account at some point tonight maybe mm -hmm. so people can check it out. And when the game comes out uh, in March, I think it comes out March 25th, We'll, we'll stream it for sure. I'm actually going to do the review for it. So maybe we'll just do a stream. I'll just do a, a live stream of me playing it for the review. Yeah, absolutely. Or something. We can we can figure something out. So This game, this game will be back. Uh, if you guys want another taste of Mr. Zav D'Amato's uh, streaming... That sounded weird. To, <laughs> yeah, another taste of Zav. Uh, tomorrow... Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, tune in to joystick.com, and we're going to have what we're calling Joystick Tiny Streams, mm -hmm. and the, uh, there will be a five-minute uh, video of Zav streaming State of Decay on PC. That's the uh, zombie game he was talking about before. Uh, tiny streams are going to be on joystick.com on Mondays and Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as always, the full joystick streams are Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want a little taste of what's coming next week, mm -hmm. on Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday, I will be streaming Outlast for PS4. A game I have never played in my entire life and know almost nothing about, except for the fact that it's a survival game and you don't have any weapons. I am going to play as though my character has no survival instinct whatsoever and thinks <laughs> he can beat everything with his bare hands. Oh, boy. Uh, after that... <laughs> that's uh, actually one of my games for the uh, 4 in February. I'm playing oh, that's, on PC. Oh, that's one of the 4 in February games? And, yeah, it's, uh, I'm doing Outlast. So I, I figured that February is the, mar the month of the heart, so I'm going to do things to make mine stop. <laughs> um, so I'm playing um, Outlast, Cryostasis, Reason to Sleep. Um, I'm playing uh, American Nightmare, Alan Wake's American Nightmare, which is not really scary, but it's a suspense game. And Rust, which I figure, naked dudes with rocks running at you. Nothing is scarier than that. I know, that I'm from Canada. That's where that usually happens. So, yeah, uh, that is awesome. one of my games. Uh, and we do have another stream set up for next Thursday. We were going to be streaming a... <laughs> a pinball RPG hybrid called Rollers of the Realm, an indie <laughs> game that was uh, funded through Kickstarter, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive. But we're going to be streaming that with uh, Joystick Reviews Content Editor Richard Mitchell uh, and the developers of the game, the director 
of Rollers of the Realm will be joining us for that stream. So it's going to be a hell of a time. I will say to um, Duck748, who says that he wants the tiny streams to be longer, the tiny streams are actually just a snippet of an actual longer stream, and you can watch mm -hmm. that entire State of Decay stream, which is like two hours long, um, yeah. on my YouTube channel. I'm sure we'll throw a link in there on uh, in the... Uh, the recap. Tiny yeah. streams are just, they're not live, they're just recaps of much longer streams on our personal channels. Um, that is it for us, everybody. If you want to hang out and interact with us more, uh, go to Facebook, Joystick, uh, Joystick's Facebook page. We're always hanging out there. You can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash joystick. And throughout the month of February, we want you to participate in the 4 in February campaign. You pick four games, and you play them. Zav is playing horror games. I am playing a bunch of old NES games that are kicking the crap out of me. Um, and we have a community page for that. So just go to Facebook and search 4 in February. Find our page. You can post up what you're playing. You can tell us about if you're streaming. It'll be awesome. Uh... And, you know, as always, go to joystick.com. We're, we're, we've got all kinds of DICE 2014 coverage this week. I reviewed a Dreamcast game. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm playing Diablo 3, and you're, and you're reviewing uh, Dreamcast games? What is going on on Joystick? Here's the difference, though. This is a brand new Dreamcast game that just came out called Redux. And it's a old-school 2D shooter in the sort of vein of... Uh, of Gradius, and it's great. It's very good. It's got mm -hmm. a couple of problems, but it's very cool. Um, yeah. As you oh. can see, my I've changed the wallpaper to Diablo 3 Reaper Souls Server Error Edition. <laughs> so and everyone are actually shouting out for uh, Google Plus. And we do have a Google Plus page. We do have a Google Plus page where it, it's our like... content is updated on Google Plus every day. Um, and every now and again, we do a Google Plus Hangout. And it's been a while since our last one. Mm -hmm. We should probably do that soon. I think the Google Plus uh, URL, short URL, is like gplus.to slash joystick. Yeah, I think that's G it. Gplus2 slash joystick, yeah. Well, that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're really, really sorry that we couldn't bring you more Reaper of Souls, but we had a good time anyway. And, we did. Uh, we learned a lot. We laughed a lot. We love the I lot. Cried. I cried twice. Well, I, I was crying before this started for <laughs> the reasons why we were not able to get this to work. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get this up at some point. Uh, in March, when the game comes out, we'll play some Reaper Souls. And I'll try to play it on my personal account. Actually, if you could drop the link in there for me, for people, Anthony, yep. that'd be great, because I have no keyboard here. Twitch.tv slash ZavDM. Thanks, everyone. All right, everybody. We'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.